We are working with an input-output analysis problem. And for these problems, there's lots of words in the word problem. It can feel overwhelming, but we're going to use the technique that's demonstrated in our textbook. And so we're going to create a technology matrix as our first step. Our textbook recommends using the different factors in alphabetical order. So we have coal, oil, and transportation given in alphabetical order. I set up a matrix, coal, oil, transportation, coal, oil, transportation, so a 3 by 3 matrix. My first step is to figure out how coal, oil, and transportation affect the production of coal. So I'm going to use some little arrows to model this. So the effect of coal, oil, and transportation having on coal, all going in this first column of my technology matrix. In my word problem, I'm focusing on the second sentence, and I'm going to take the numbers from this sentence and fill them in on my arrows. So it's going to take 20 cents on the dollar of coal to produce coal, no money from oil to produce coal, and 40 cents on the dollar from transportation to produce coal. So I take these numbers and I stick them in my technology matrix. Now I'm ready to move to my second sentence. This time I'm looking at the cost of coal, oil, and transportation on the production of oil. So again, I set up the arrows, and reading through the sentence, I fill in the dollar amount. So production of a dollar's worth of oil requires ten, nothing from coal, 10 cents from oil, and 20 cents from transportation. Again, I'm going to take these numbers and transfer them into my technology matrix, filling in the column under oil, because these are the costs to produce oil. Now I move to the fourth sentence, and this time I'm looking at the cost from coal, oil, and transportation on T, transportation. So again, I set up the arrows, and as I read through the sentence, I fill in the dollar amounts. So production of a dollar's worth of transportation is going to take 40 cents on the dollar for, from coal, 20 cents on the dollar from oil, and 20 cents on the dollar from transportation. Once again, I fill these numbers into the matrix. So there I've completed my technology matrix as my first step in solving this input-output analysis problem. Now as I move to the next sentence, it asks me to find the output from each sector to satisfy the final demand. And so I'm going to use this equation. In this equation, x is the final demand. And you see the equation is already solved for x, so if I just fill in the remaining matrices, I will get the answer matrix x, the output. So my first matrix that I need is the identity matrix. Because my technology matrix is 3 by 3, I need to use a 3 by 3 identity matrix. So I will be the matrix with ones on the main diagonals and zeros elsewhere that serves as the identity matrix. Next, M stands for my technology matrix, which I already created, so just labeling that M. Finally, D is my demand matrix. So my demand in this problem, I want to keep my variables in the same order, which we are using alphabetical order, and the de final demand is given in the sentence, so 30, 10, and 20, and I fill those numbers into my demand matrix. Now I have all my matrices ready, and I'm ready to use my graph and calculator to actually do the work for me. So put them off to the side and give me a moment to get my calculator set up. So I pulled in my graphing calculator and you can also see my matrices over to the side. My first task with my calculator is to enter all of this information and store it in my calculator. So I'll use the second button and then this x to the minus 1 in the blueprint you see the word matrix here so this allows me to edit my matrix menu. And then I have options of names, math, and edit. I want to go over to edit. And I'm editing matrix A right now. So I'll press enter. 
Matrix A, the first one I'm going to use is the identity matrix, and that was a 3 and press enter by 3 matrix. So now I go through and enter the values, so 1, enter. I do have to push enter after each value, typing in the zeros and the ones for the identity matrix. As I complete that matrix, I want to exit the screen. So I'm going to use second and the mode button, which is allowing me to quit that screen. Next, I want to enter my technology matrix. So second and the x to the minus one key gets me to matrix. I go over to edit. And this time I want to put this matrix as matrix B. So I arrow down to matrix B press enter. And again this matrix is a 3 by 3 matrix, so I push the size and now I need to type in all of the data values. The calculator will move across the rows, so point 0.2, enter, 0, enter, point 0.4, enter, and then it moves down to the next row. You want to be careful to double check your work as you're typing because a typo here will definitely affect your answer as your calculator will be calculating your answer for you using these matrices. And again, once I've typed all of the values into my matrix, I want to exit this screen, so second and quit using the mode button. I have one more matrix to enter, so second matrix, arrow over to edit. I want to go the whole way down and edit matrix C. And so this is going to be three rows by one column. And I type in my values. and again I quit. So now I have stored all of the matrix information into my calculator. So next I want to go back to my equation. So give me a moment as I arrange that. So in the background here you can see I've changed slides and I have this equation so that the final demand x, which is what I want to solve, is the identity minus the technology matrix, the inverse of that, times the demand. And I'm able, because I've already stored the values of each matrix into my calculator, to just type this in. So be careful with the typing, but first thing we want to do is parentheses. The identity matrix was the first one I typed in, so I'll go second, matrix, and here at names we stored that as matrix A, so enter. Then I'll subtract, and I'll go to second matrix. Next I want my technology matrix, which we typed in second, so we stored that as B, so enter, and my parentheses. Now, to find the inverse of this, which is the meaning of that exponent of negative 1, that key that I've been typing, but I've been using the second function with it, I actually want to type the key itself. So you see the little negative 1, and then I want to multiply that times D, the demand matrix, so second matrix. And we put our demand matrix in third, so number three. And so here is, in my calculator, the same equation that we have. And at this point, the magic happens. We just press enter, and it gives us an answer. So 71, 26, 67. Now, what do those numbers mean? So, what we need to go back to our problem and remember how we place things in order. So, back at my problem, you'll notice here on the very edge, I still have the numbers on my calculator screen. And in our problem, we went in alphabetical order, so the 71 comes first, and that represents 71 billion for coal. And then, 
Our next one was oil, and so the 26 represents 26 billion as the output for oil. And then finally, 67 billion as the output for transportation. And so we have taken all the inputs from the economy as what is the final output needed and what is needed in each industry, and we've calculated the output level that satisfies both the internal demands of the industry and the external market. Now we have a whole second paragraph. And so the second paragraph is talking about the future five years out, what's going to be happening. So with the second paragraph, we're just going to change one piece of this puzzle. Our technology matrix did not change. Our identity matrix did not change. The thing that has changed is the projection numbers for the demand. So it's projected that coal will decrease, oil will increase, and that'll have an effect on transportation, given that a small increase as well. So I just take those numbers, clear out my demand matrix, and put in the new numbers. Now I'm ready to go to my calculator and work with this as well. So my new demand matrix 23, 16, 22. In my calculator, I've already entered I as the identity. I've already entered the technology matrix, so all I need to update is the demand matrix. So I'm going to go second, matrix, arrow over to edit. And I'm going to go the whole way down and enter a new one rather than replacing the matrix I had in. So for letter D, I'll enter. Demand matrix is three rows by one column. And my numbers are 23, 16, and 22. Once I've entered that, I can quit. And now I'm going to be re-entering my equation to solve for x. So my equation from before, parenthesis, matrix A, minus matrix B, matrix B if you remember was where we put our technology matrix, and a parenthesis, take the inverse using the x to the negative 1 key, and this time we're going to multiply it by our new demand matrix, so we placed our new demand matrix as letter D, or the fourth matrix in our calculator, and I hit enter, and I, again, have answers just that quickly. I don't have to redo the whole problem when I looked at projected demand for the future. And that is really the power of this model, is that you can change the demand numbers and you don't have to redo all of your work. So back to my word problem. I've done step two here. I've solved the equation and I put in the new demand numbers and I have my output and I just have to translate them and so I remember I used alphabetical order which means the 62.1 billion is for coal, the 32.6 billion is for oil, and the 66.7 billion is for transportation. And so I have used the technology matrix twice and I've used my calculator to do all of the hard calculations in solving that all I really had to do was enter all of the information and I could complete an input-output analysis problem.